from around the globe, it's theCUBE, covering Fortinet Security Summit. Brought to you by Fortinet. Welcome back to theCUBE. Lisa Martin here live in Napa Valley at the Fortinet Championship. This is exciting kick off to the 2021-22 FedEx Cup regular series. We're here with Fortinet, and we're here with one of our distinguished alumni, John Madison, the CMO and EVP of products. John, it's great to see you in person. Yes, Lisa, it's been a while. But it has been a while. Good to be back here live. I know, you're not on Zoom. You're actually right six feet across from me. Yeah, look, yes, definitely physical. <laughs> it does. Talk to me about the PGA and Fortinet. What are some of the synergies? Uh, there's a lot. I think one of the biggest ones is the uh, the culture of the two companies. So, I mean, uh, PGA Tour, I think they've donated almost $3 billion to charities over the last 15 years, 20 years. And uh, we're the same. We would definitely want to give back to the community. Uh, we want to make sure we're providing training and education. Um, we're trying to uh, reskill some of the veterans, for example, over 2,000. Uh, also, women in technology, you may have heard one of the keynotes today about that, attempts from an education and training perspective. So, there's a lot of synergies between the PGHO and, and you know, Fortinet from a, from a cultural perspective. I love that. Cultural synergy is so important, but also some of the initiatives, women in tech, STEM, STEAM, those are fantastic. Give our audience a little overview of what's going on here. We've got a, over 300 partners and customers here. What are some of the key themes being discussed today? Yeah, we're going to try and keep it small of this event. You know, we don't want 10,000, 20,000 people. We'll keep it, keep it smaller. So we have about 300 customers and partners. And what we want to do is bring together you know, the, the top people in cybersecurity, in networking. We want to bring customers so they can network with, e with each other. We want to bring the, the partners here. Uh, and, and so you, what you're going to see is you can see the Tech Expo behind you there where people are talking technology. Uh, some of the keynotes focus on areas like, like ransomware, for example. And, uh, cybersecurity in, in, di in different industries. So uh, definitely it's a, it's a smaller gathering, but I think it's um, very focused on cybersecurity and networking. Well, that's such an important topic these days. You know, you and I have spoken a number of times this summer by Zoom and talking about the threat landscape and the changes and yep. the work from anywhere. When you and I spoke, I think it was in June, you said 25% we expect are going to go back to the office, 25% permanently remote, and the other 50 sort of transient. Do you still think given where we are now in September, that yeah. that's still... No, I'm going to modify my prediction a bit. I think it's um, going to be hybrid for some time. And I don't think it's just, yes, at home or not at home, or at work or not at work. I think it's going to be maybe one or two days, uh, or maybe three days versus five days. And so we definitely see the hybrid mode of about 50% uh, for the next couple of years at least. Uh, I think the, you know, the uh, ransomware has been in the news a lot. We saw the Colonial. Um, the ransomware has increased. We did a, a, a threat report recently, showed about a 10x increase in, in ransomware. So I think customers are very aware of the cybersecurity threats. The damage now is not just you know, sucking information out on IP, it's causing damage to the infrastructure. So uh, definitely the, you know, the attack surface has increased with people work from home versus in the office, and then you've got the threat landscape really, really focused on that ransomware piece. Yeah, ransomware becoming a household word. I'm pretty sure even my mom knows what that is. And talking about the nearly 11x increase mm. in, what was that, the first half of 2021? Yeah, over the last 12 months. And I think what it, what it's, what's also happened is ransomware used to be a broad attack. So let me send out and see if I can find, you know, a thousand companies. Again, we saw with a colonial attack, it's very targeted now as well. So you've got both targeted and broad ransomware campaigns going on. And, and a lot of companies are just rethinking their cybersecurity strategy to defend against that. And that work from home component is another attack surface. So a lot of companies that were operational technology companies that had air gaps and people would come to work, now that you can remotely get into the network, it's again, you can attack people at home back into the network. Is that a direct correlation that you saw in the last year in terms of the, that increase in ransomware and this sudden shift to working from home? Well, I also think there's other components and so I think the ransomware organizations, the gangs could use crypto more easily than checks and dollars and stuff like that so they could get their money out. It became very profitable versus trying to sell credit card data and then the dark web. So you saw that component. You also saw, as I said, the attack surface be larger for companies and so those two things unfortunately have come together 
uh, and you know, really seen an exponential rise in attacks. Perfect storm. Let's talk about some of your customer conversations and how they've changed and evolved in the last 18 months. Give me a, a snapshot of when you're talking with customers. What are some of the things that they're coming to you for help, looking for the most guidance? Yeah, well I think you know the, the digital uh, innovation transformation has almost accelerated because of you know, uh, COVID. They've, they've accelerated those programs, especially in industries like retail where it becomes almost essential now to have that digital connectivity. So they can't stop those programs. They need to accelerate those programs. Uh, but as they move those programs faster, they, again, they expand their attack surface. And so what I'm definitely seeing is a convergence of traditional kind of networking, connectivity, and cybersecurity teams like the CIO and the CISO working on projects jointly. So whether it be the WAN connectivity or whether it be endpoint or whether it be cloud, uh, both teams are working much more closely going forward. Synergies there that are absolutely essential. Talk to me about what you guys announced with Linksys yesterday. Speaking of work from home and how that has transformed every mm. industry, talk to us about the homework solution powered by Fortinet. Yeah, well, we definitely see work from home <laughs> being there for some time and so the question is, you know, what do you do there? So I think initially, 18 months ago, what happened was uh, companies turned on their, what they call their VPN, which gives them a, an encrypted access. And they went from 5% to 100% people on the VPN. I, I speak to customers now and they're saying, that was kind of a temporary solution. Let me put some endpoint security there. And it was kind of temporary and now I need a longer term solution because I can see this at least 50% for the next two years being this hybrid work from home. And so they're saying, well, let's look at something, let's try and take the best of enterprise networking and security, and then try and match that with an easy to set up Wi-Fi routing system. So the two companies you know, have come together with this joint venture. Uh, we're taking Linksys technology from an ease of use at home. It's very simple to set up. You can do it on an app or whatever. Uh, and then we integrate the Fortinet technology inside there from a security and enterprise networking. The enterprises can manage it themselves. Uh, the, the enterprise component and the consumer can manage their piece. What's very important is that separation as well. So the privacy of your home network and then to make sure the enterprise piece is secure and then also introducing some simple what we call quality of service. So for a business person things like Teams or Zoom has preference over some of the gaming and downloads of, of the family. So I think it brings the best of both worlds. Ease of use, uh, and enterprise security together. I'm sure the kids won't like that, that it's not optimized for gaming, but it is optimized for things like video conferencing, which you know, in the last year we've been dependent on yeah. that for collaboration and communication. Tell me a little bit about the tuning for video conferencing and collaboration. Yeah, so uh, we announced both Zoom and Microsoft Teams, probably the two biggest apps which are used from a work from home business perspective. And uh, definitely if you've got a, a normal uh, system at home, and you know, your kids are even downloading something, a new game or something like that, they can just take, they can take the whole bandwidth. And so the ability to kind of scale up back and make sure the Zoom meeting or the Teams meeting as first priority, I think is very important to get that connectivity and that uh, quality of service, uh, but also have that security component as well. Yeah, the security component. Component is increasingly important. Talk to me about why Linksys. Was COVID the, ex the catalyst for this partnership? Well, I think um, you know we looked at it, and we you know we have our own work from home solutions as well. I mean, our own gear. Uh, but we definitely wanted to find something where we could integrate into a more of a ease of use solution set. And uh, it just so happened we were speaking to to Linksys on some of the things. And you know, as soon as we started talking, it was very very clear that this would be a great relationship and, and joint venture. And so we made the investment. It's not just you know here's some of our code. We made a substantial investment in Linksys. And uh, yeah, we see some other things coming in the future as well. Can you talk to me a little bit about what the go-to-market will be? How can enterprises and consumers get this? Yeah, so it's, it's more of an enterprise sale. I know some people think Linksys, they think consumer yeah. straight away. For us, this is a sale to the enterprises. So the enterprises buy it. Um, it's a subscription service. So they just pay a monthly fee. And they can have different levels of service inside there as well. Uh, they'll get, you know, for each employee, they'll get one, two or, or three nodes. Uh, and, and then, the, so the so the enterprise is paying for it, which I think will help a bit, and uh, they will manage it through their system. Um, but the consumer will get this kind of again, this very easy to use, very high speed connectivity, mesh technology. So, 
yes, Linksys will sell some of it as well, but I think, you know, actually Fortinet will be the, the major kind of go-to-market because of our 500,000 business customers we have out there. Right, and your huge partner network. Yes. So let's talk about, um, give me a little bit of a view in terms of the, the benefit that IT will get leveraging the, the Linksys homework solution. I imagine that centralized visibility of all the devices connected to the corporate network, even though wherever the devices are? Yeah, it actually extends the corporate network. So, uh, not in this initial release, in the second release. In the first release, they can go to a, a cloud portal uh, and they can manage what they can manage from an enterprise perspective. The, 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 the uh, employee can go to the same portal but gets a different view, can manage their piece. Uh, in the second release, we'll actually have support in our management system. So, if you're an existing Fortinet customer and you've got our management systems, and say you've got, I don't know, 250 sites and you're managing some of our firewalls or SD-WAN systems, uh, you'll be able to see all the employees' Linksys systems as well in that same management system. But again, there's a separation of duty and, and, and privacy where they can just manage the enterprise components, not they can't see the traffic from the from the employee side, from the from the non-business transactions. Okay, that privacy is key there. Do yes. you think that's in a perfect world would help quiet down some of the perfect storm that we're seeing with ransomware and this explosion, this work from anywhere, work from home going to be persisting. Technologies like what yeah. you're doing with Linksys is going to help make a dent in that spike? I think it's a component. And so for us, the long-term strategy uh, for users and endpoints, this kind of Linksys component uh, is, is, is an element. We also feel like there needs to be a transition of VPN technology into zero trust. So you're limiting the access to applications versus the network. Uh, and then definitely the third component would be uh, t technology like EDR, which is more behavioral based mm. versus signature based. And so you bring all those three together, absolutely will make a dent in, in ransomware because you're just reducing the attack surface greatly, uh, but also scanning the, the technology to make sure if you see something, you can act straight away. And then pair that with what you guys are doing and the investment that Fortinet's been making for a while in training and helping to fill yeah. that cybersecurity skills gap, which is growing year on year. Yeah, I speak to a lot of you know, CISOs and CIOs and they can, oh, what, what's the latest technology? What can you do next? I say, well, the most important thing you can do is train your people. Train them not to click on that phishing link. Right, Because yes. still, our, our numbers are around 6% of employees click on things, and it doesn't matter what company you are, uh, and so the education and the training is the, what I call the most basic step. We're introducing a what we call an IT awareness program as part of NSC, which allows companies to download some tools, and they'll try some, you know, some phishing emails that go out there, they'll see the response, see how they can, so I, I always say that the people, is the, the, the social engineering is the first step to try and fix and reduce. That's the biggest attack surface you have. It's getting so sophisticated and so personalized. I mean, I've seen examples with training that I've done for various companies where you really have to look two, three, four times at it and have yeah. the awareness alone to know that this might not be legitimate. Yeah, yeah, especially when people are just clicking on more things because they're going to more places and so you have to be very careful. You can stop a bunch of that with some rule sets to the systems, but if they're you know, faking the domain, uh, spear phishing where they know exactly the context of where the email's coming out. It, it's hard, but you're just going to be just very, very careful. If, you know, if in doubt, don't click on it. I agree, if in doubt, don't click it. Well, Joan, it's always great talking to you. Uh, exciting to hear the growth of Fortinet, what you're doing with the PGA Tour, the synergies there, the cultural synergies, and um, the growth in customers and partners. Lots of stuff to come. Can't wait till our next conversation, which I hope is also in person. Yes, 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 for, for sure. You know, I think this is a great venue in that it's, as you can see, it's open. We're outside. Which helps a lot. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's in the, you know, it's not far from headquarters, just down the road there. Uh, we've committed to this uh, event for six or seven years, and so this is our first time. Uh, but definitely, we're hoping, you know, to get out a bit more as, as we go forward. Excellent, I'm glad to see a company like Fortinet taking the lead and, uh, and you, you look like you're dressed for golf. You said you have meetings, but I'm going to let you go because you probably uh, have to get to the to I balance. have a few more meetings. I wish they would leave a little gap for some golf. I'll, I'll try and work <laughs> one as we go forward. Yeah, anyway, John, thank you for joining thank me. You, Great Lisa. to see you. For John Madison, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE from the Fortinet Championship Security Summit in Napa.